Пане Володимире, можете включати? Я так тільки що включив. Дуже дякую. Uh, uh, dear colleagues, uh, all our participants are uh, now uh, here and uh, we will start uh, uh, our section of PhD Symposium of ICTERI Conference. Uh, so I uh, would like to uh, remember you uh, that uh, each of presenter uh, has uh, 15 minutes to present your results and uh, 15 minutes uh, to answer the questions. Uh, uh, so if you uh, have um, report less than 15 minutes, uh, uh, in this case, uh, probably you will have more questions, uh, but it's not a rule. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, your participation in our event. Uh, and uh, in previous uh, first section, I told about uh, uh, numbers of accepted papers, uh, the low rate of acceptance uh, due to um, preparation of spring and volume uh, requirement uh, of which uh, is about 30% uh, 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 from all submissions. So uh, we will start and uh, uh, our first uh, a report uh, prepared by Alexandra Novak and Vitaly Kobitz, uh, which is titled Artificial Intelligence Impact on Food Security of States uh, in the World. Uh, so, Alexandra, floor is yours. Uh, please remember to... Uh, yeah. Of uh, and, and could you help me? Um, I need to choose... Uh, Mm, to share the screen or to share the window? Uh, you can use it both day. Uh, you can uh, share your presentation, uh, but also in full size. Or to share your screen and after that uh, to choose uh, um, full screen of presentation. Just one moment. Mm -hmm. mm. Because it seems. Uh, Please try try it. Uh, if if it's necessary, uh, you can uh, change your action. You have an option uh, uh, to start demonstration on this. Yeah, screen. yeah, I understand. Just one moment, because this computer has some some internal lag, mm, okay. and I'm trying to fix it very quickly. Uh, so, uh, because we have some uh, yeah. seconds, uh, I uh, remember you that by default uh, all microphones off uh, all session participants, uh, all questions uh, should be written in session chat or by microphone. Uh, the presenter is strongly suggested to use the slides uh, that help him and her answer the questions. And the session chair selects the question to the presenter. Uh, this simple instruction can help us uh, uh, to follow our uh, presentation and each of you has uh, 30 minutes to present uh, uh, your research. Uh, Alexandra, uh, do you need more time? Okay. Do you see? My, yes, uh, we see your yeah. presentation. Please yeah, great. start. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, dear chairs, uh, dear participants uh, of uh, PhD Symposium, my name is Alexandra Novak. I am very grateful to participate here today and very grateful to Ukrainian defenders who continue um, their fight against Russian aggressors. So, I'm here to present a um, PhD paper um, Artificial Intelligence Impact on Food Security of States in the World. Uh, 
as prepared by Alexandra Novok and uh, Vitaly Kobitz. So uh, here you can see the structure of my today's presentation. So to begin with, the goal of our paper is to measure the impact of artificial intelligence on food security of states. In a broader sense, we aim to research the linkage between food security and artificial intelligence in terms of um, uh, digitalization processes by using cluster analysis. Our main research tasks included to study digitalization process of agri-food sector, to analyze the socioeconomic impact of artificial intelligence on food security, to define data sources, to cluster countries against selected parameters, food security, digitalization, economic development, and validate research results. Um, to tell you the truth, there is no uniform definition of food security now. So in our paper, we used a Global Food Security Index 2022 uh, methodology uh, with four food security pillars, affordability, uh, quality and safety, availability, sustainability, and adaptation. Uh, alternatively, the high-level panel of experts on food security and nutrition defines six food security dimensions availability, access, utilization, stability, agency, and sustainability. Recently, there has been a shift from the perception of hunger as a lack of availability due to insufficient food supplies and international price instability to lack of access and stability due to social, political, and economic um, inequalities exacerbated by sudden shocks. The most recent one is Russia's war against Ukraine that triggered the current triple F crisis, food, fuel, and fertilizers. So, to withstand the current food security challenges, according to FAO, um, Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, uh, nearly 735 million people in the world faced hunger in 2022. Therefore, there is a need for radical changes, and the transformative power of digital technologies in agriculture is widely acknowledged and referred to as the fourth agricultural revolution, digital agriculture or agriculture for zero. There are three main levels under the roof of agriculture for zero system. First, fundamental elements include basic pillars without which agriculture for zero could not exist. Second, structuring elements cover key technologies that can revolutionize and impact the way commodities are produced, processed, traded, or consumed. Third, complementary elements address specific agricultural issues that require a certain degree of maturity with the structuring elements of agriculture for zero. Recently, digitalization in general and artificial intelligence solutions have become a global mainstream. Simply speaking, AE allows computers and machines to perform tasks previously thought to rely on human experience, creativity, and ingenuity, but the debate over socioeconomic impact of IE in agri-food sector is ongoing. Overall, AE solutions are aimed at increasing agricultural productivity and crop yield, improving resource management, and driving down operational costs. The most widely used AE solutions in agriculture include robotics, big data, and sensing techniques. Here you see the advantages and disadvantages of AE application in agri-food sector. In general, it is expected that AE should positively influence agri-food sector by a number of reasons. First, agricultural automation can contribute to productivity increase. AE technologies, uh, they um, contribute to uh, decisions automation that precede the performing of physical operations and eventually creates new jobs. Second, AE solutions enable to quickly gather and interpret large amounts of data, predicting where and why hunger occurs, thus preventing food crisis and providing for better management, such as efficient food distribution. Third, AE technologies may enhance environmental sustainability positively and contribute to sustainable and development goals due to more efficient use of resources and inputs. Fourth, IE gives, gives business new market opportunities combined with big data and improved connectivity, such as 5G. 
uh, IE can also be utilized to monitor agri-products quality, track food distribution and delivery. These may result in logistics cost reduction and profit increase for farmers. But there is a strong argument that Agriculture for Zero may not reach its full potential because of the complexity of agricultural system that undergoes transformation. There is a number of negative impacts. First, applying key solutions may result in increased unemployment due to human labor replacement. It occurs when agricultural automation is not suited to specific local needs. Second, the use of digital automation technologies is growing, but mostly in high-income countries. Therefore, the digital divide among high-income countries and low- and middle-income countries is only increasing. Third, IE technologies strongly rely on power and ICT infrastructure, especially due to lack of connectivity in the rural area. Fourth, there are large costs for introduction of IE technologies. Finally, there are concerns on data privacy issues. Then, we shall move to research methodology. The main research question is to define the impact of AI technologies on food security of states. We focused on studying two whys. Whether digitalization AI gives competitive advantages in food security and whether agriculture share of GDP correlates with AI diffusion and country's economy. We uh, utilize cluster analysis, some algorithm and regression analysis methods. Then, you can see six selected parameters for our research. First, we considered four food security parameters of Economist Impact Global Food Security Index 2022 dataset. It covers qualitative and quantitative food security drivers for 111 countries. As of today, it remains the major benchmark for food security assessment. Second, to account the impact of digitalization, we selected the Global Connectivity Index uh, that evaluates 70 countries in deploying digital infrastructure and capabilities under three categories, starter, adopter, frontrunner. We attributed this classification to our analysis and added absent category for the remaining countries. Third, in our research, we included agriculture value added percent of GDP parameter. It reflects the importance of agriculture sector development in countries' GDP and serves as a marker for countries' level of, of uh, economic development. So, in short, uh, we built country clusters to take into account four GFCI dimensions, GCI and agriculture value added via unsupervised self-organizing maps with input layer of six neurons. All countries are self-organizing on the output layer in euros. The average distance to the nearest neurons after 100 iterations is decreased on almost a third. So, here you can see a formal notation of some algorithm. Um, first, small random values are assigned for all values. And then uh, the winning neuron uh, with minimum distance is selected. Third, the immediate environment of BMO is determined and its radius decreases with each iteration. Fourth, the ways of selected nodes are recomputed and uh, the winning neuron is um, um, selected. Then we are moving to our research results. That is the most interesting. Uh, for the number of clusters, class 6, we have performed hierarchical clustering through some algorithm and have constructed the maps of codes type. The results obtained are presented. Uh, so, in the end, we defined six clusters and classified countries under four GCI categories absence, clusters four, six, starter, cluster one, adopter, cluster two, frontrunner, clusters three, six. The sets of attributes of each country cluster uh, you can find here. So, here you can see the comparative advantages of each cluster. Food is most affordable and available in clusters 3 and 6, and the lowest affordable in clusters 4 and 5. Also, the highest quality and sustainability is observed in cluster 3, the very low quality food is in cluster 4. For our research, 
the competitive advantages of digital technologies are the most interesting. Taking into account dependence between pillars of a GFCI and GCI rank, we can conclude that the more GFCI, the more GCI rank clusters 2, 3 and 6 and vice versa. The less GFCI, the less GCI rank clusters 1, 4 and 5. If we consider dependence between GFCI rank and agriculture value added, we see the more important is agriculture for countries' economy, the less digitally developed it is, and the more food insecure, such as clusters 1, 4, and 5, and vice versa. The more GFCI, the less agriculture value added, clusters 2, 3, and 6, and the more digitalized is the country. So, here comes the main results of our research. First, we established that digitalization and AE increase contributes to higher food security. Multiple regression between GFCI rank as dependent variable and explanatory variables GCI and agriculture value added demonstrates that movement in cluster countries from absence to starter, from starter to adopter, from adopter to front runner give rise to, to GFCI rank by an average of 5.6 positions. Thus, Adopter front runner countries are more food secure than absence starter countries. Second, agriculture share percent of GDP correlates with AE application and countries' economy development. The regression results demonstrate that the more countries' economy depends on agriculture, the lower the country's food security rating is. And if countries' agricultural value added increases by 1%, the country's GCI rating will decrease by 0.5 positions on average. Therefore, post-industrial industrial economies demonstrate higher digitalization results and are more food secure than agrarian economies and agrarian economies in emergency. So, um, the GCA categories were used to perform the analysis of GFCA rank and agriculture value added for different level of AE development to prove a competitive advantages. The countries with higher GCA rank, factor 3, have greater digital readiness and resilience than countries with factor 1, thanks to strong digital infrastructure and, as a result, the potential of AE application. We also observe that the greater the level of AE in a country, the higher the level of food security. So, more digitally developed countries are better able to respond to current food security threats and build future resilience. Uh, we checked uh, the validity of obtained results by comparing um, the results with a, a Yahoo list of 12 most advanced countries in agriculture technology. And uh, they included countries from clusters 3 and 6 with the lowest level of GDP dependency on agriculture and the highest food security level. These countries are Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Israel, Japan, Netherlands, New Zealand, South Korea, UK and United States. So, uh, we also um, checked uh, the results with FIO distribution of 45 countries in need of external assistance of food. And uh, here we found that it coincides with uh, countries in clusters 1, 4 and 5. Therefore, we shall call these clusters as agrarian economies in emergency. So, here comes our conclusions. First, the transformative power of digital technologies gives countries competitive advantages in terms of food security. Second, the countries with high level of digital development are more food secure and crisis resilient to withstand current food security crisis. Third, countries with low share of agriculture value added in GDP are more food secure than countries with high share of agriculture value added in GDP. And eventually, we understand that the list of AE-related impacts on food security of states is not exhaustive and further research is needed. So, in our further research, we shall focus on enhancing the methodology of addressing the research hypothesis, analyzing the overall impact of digitalization on agri-food sector, and assessing the modern approach, namely AE solutions, 
towards achieving food security. Thank you very much, and I will be ready to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your interesting presentation and for your detailed report. And uh, now we go to uh, section uh, answers and questions. Uh, so, dear participants, uh, if you have questions, uh, please use uh, chat box uh, and you can send here uh, your questions uh, and I can uh, uh, use it for presenter and uh, you can use uh, raise your hand and uh, I give you uh, um, possibility to ask your question. Uh, so, uh, uh, I uh, didn't see a question through chat box uh, and to raise it a uh, hand. Uh, so I, I will start and I have uh, uh, some question for your report. And uh, my first question is, what is practical application of results of your research? Uh, so Actually, uh, the practical application of uh, our research um, is that um, uh, first um, uh, it uh, contributes uh, to studying uh, the artificial intelligence impact uh, and artificial intelligence has become a mainstream and it is uh, quite important uh, to understand uh, the connections and relations uh, that uh, artificial intelligence uh, has uh, on food security uh, because as far as we understand the crisis is um, uh, immense and uh, to alleviate uh, such um, uh, difficult um, food security crisis uh, we need to use uh, revolutionary methods and uh, digital agriculture and uh, specifically artificial intelligence can become such a powerful tool and that can help us uh, to um, to move uh, and make uh, the world uh, to move the world out of poverty uh, and uh, specifically out of hunger. Uh, therefore, um, it is very important uh, to uh, to understand the relations between artificial intelligence and food security. Thank you for your answer. And I have one more question. Um, um, we, uh, you uh, considered different clusters of countries and uh, you presented uh, uh, now. Uh, so uh, the, my next question uh, uh, will connect with uh, these clusters. So uh, which uh, your proposals uh, for different clusters of uh, the countries? Uh, could you propose, for example, such recommendations for each cluster uh, in context of uh, digitalization? Mm -hmm. So I can uh, just switch uh, to the slide uh, where we presented the comparative, the comparative advantages of each clusters. So uh, if we speak about digital component, we see that uh, um, we have actually three groups and uh, the first one is very low uh, so it is um, countries that are either uh, starter or absence category and they have um, a very uh, purely developed uh, food, um, food security systems um, eventually these countries face acute food insecurity and uh, um, a lot of work should be done uh, just to uh, to bring them out of um, these dependence on emergency food relief and uh, building uh, their um, strong uh, their agricultural systems strong enough. Uh, so, in terms of digitalization, um, I I would also recommend for these clusters uh, to enhance uh, their connectivity because uh, we understand that. Um, Artificial intelligence requires energy and requires rather good internet connection and also to introduce some national programs uh, that would uh, be focused on digital development and uh, a component as well. As regards cluster two, it is, um, to my mind, uh, 
the most interesting for us because it um, indicates um, uh, countries that are already uh, like uh, um, that are already um, working towards a implement uh, solutions and uh, but still not enough uh, and uh, the level of agriculture share of uh, in gdp of these countries is very high remains very high and actually ukraine is uh, the part of uh, this group uh, so here i would suggest uh, to um, promote uh, digital agriculture uh, policies um, because even in Ukraine we do not we still do not have uh, any strategic document as regards digital agriculture and uh, this is much needed uh, as well as the use of some um, uh, digital uh, the support uh, for the use uh, uh, of um, agri-tech uh, agri uh, solutions uh, and uh, support uh, for startups and creating this ecosystem. And in this uh, uh, case, for instance, in Ukraine, uh, such um, movements um, are, uh, has, have already been made. And uh, actually we see that um, IT sector is booming despite the war and in particular agri-tech startup component is also developing so um, therefore these countries uh, they are the most promising so uh, these are markets uh, with high potential uh, in terms of uh, uh, IE development and actually that will serve uh, food security improvement but um, still uh, some potential is not fully realized and if we if we talk about countries from cluster three and cluster six, these are countries, uh, they are advanced economies. They have uh, um, a low share of agriculture in their GDP, but uh, a very strong uh, um, agriculture sector. And uh, they have quite a developed uh, infrastructure for digital development. And actually this is a result of uh, um, consistent policies that have been um, provided uh, there for years. Uh, so it seems to me that these countries are uh, rather well um, situated uh, as compared to other countries. And as I have mentioned, uh, um, we also validated the results of our research just to understand how um, and how it reflects uh, the current uh, statistics and current trends. And we uh, found that eventually countries from cluster three and cluster six, uh, um, they correspond to countries with the highest development of agri-tech startups and uh, actually with the countries that uh, have revolutionized uh, their agriculture sector and um, with, uh, with one uh, with one of other components, uh, um, with uh, the tool of artificial intelligence and, and digital agriculture. Um, so yes, um, as for myself, uh, these uh, the results were pretty interesting, and uh, um, it's uh, to my mind it is uh, great that they correlate with uh, with the current trends. That means that we. Um, we have found this uh, justification, so how these uh, um, processes evolve. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your answer in details. Uh, maybe a new question arise in our participants. Uh, if you have any, please uh, uh, raise your hand or send it in chat box. Uh, we have possibility to ask one more question maybe. Uh, as I uh, see, we have no new question. And uh, so I, I have uh, one small question for you. Um, uh, the question is, why some countries with a big share of uh, agriculture industry have no advantage in food security? What do you think? 
Um, I think this relates highly uh, to the level of uh, the economic development because, uh, and here uh, just we come to our next, uh, our one more categorization of countries that we made. So here we see that um, we actually see that this parameter of agriculture share as, as percent of GDP is um, an is a so-called marker uh, for um, for seeing uh, the level of countries' development. And here we see that post-industrial and industrial economies that, uh, and eventually, um, the Ukraine is uh, is like in in between industrial and agrarian economies, and eventually it is agrarian economy um, as of today. So these uh, post-industrial and industrial countries, they are more food secure um, as far as they are more economically advanced and they have more resources to invest in increasing their agricultural productivity, increasing in so new technologies and uh, uh, increasing the use of new technologies. And um, uh, actually, um, the economies are more resilient than the economies of countries that highly rely on agriculture. And we see here um, the problem in Ukraine when uh, our export, uh, agrarian export, is blocked and uh, uh, our economy is suffering a major blow and uh, we hope that this situation will uh, will somehow be solved in in a matter of months but eventually it makes us very uh, vulnerable uh, to uh, global shocks as well uh, and uh, the countries that have uh, very high share of um, agriculture and their GDP and high reliance uh, they are actually they have uh, fewer possibilities to protect themselves against such um, such crisis and global shocks such as um, price rise or like um, some food crisis or some or for instance covid or uh, such events as uh, uh, unexpected wars and conflicts Thank and you. these Thank countries you. are in most um, in most cases they rely on external food assistance specifically agrarian economies in emergency yeah thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you so much for all your answers uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, um, a result of a very intensive uh, work uh, during uh, the process of preparation thank you so much and uh, we will go to our uh, next uh, presentation. Uh, our next presentation is prepared by Sergei Savchenko and Vitaly Kobitz, uh, which is titled by uh, Increasing uh, Investment Portfolio Profitability with uh, Computer Analysis Trading Strategies. Uh, so, uh, uh, Sergei, uh, you're welcome. Uh, the floor is yours and uh, uh, please start your presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> I hope you can uh, hear me and uh, see my screen. Yes, we see. Okay, I will start then. So, dear chairs and participants of the conference, uh, my name is Sergei Savchenko and I'm a PhD student on software engineering. Uh, let me introduce the research Increasing Investment Portfolio Profitability with Computer Analysis Trading Strategies, prepared by me and my scientific advisor Vitaly Kobitz from Kyrgyzstan State University, Ukraine. Uh, I'd like to start with the introduction of the structure of my presentation. Uh, first, I'll talk about the motivation of uh, the research, and uh, I'll also look at uh, other approaches that we have explored in our review of existing researches. I also will give a brief description of an algorithm for rebalancing an investment portfolio based on buy and sell signals from uh, technical analysis indicators. And finally, we will look at the results of the experiments we have conducted. So our research is devoted to the study on the effectiveness of using different middle and long-term trading strategies based on computer analysis indicators. 
During the experimental part of the research, we compared the effectiveness of using such computer analysis indicators as moving average convergence divergence, relative strength, strength index, and uh, support and resistance. The results prove that using certain computer analysis strategies allows not only increasing the initial investment portfolio profitability on rising periods in the financial market, but also may reduce loss during a global financial market recession. <clears throat> the inflation index or consumer price index is an indicator that categorizes uh, changes in the general level of prices for goods and services that the population buys for personal consumption. In Ukraine, the inflation index was 5% and 10% in 2020 and 2021, respectively. At the end of 2022, the inflation rate exceeded 12, uh, sorry, 20%, and the Ukrainian government included an expected inflation index of 12, uh, 28% in the planning of the state budget for 2023. Traditional methods of protecting savings from inflation, uh, such as bank deposits or bonds, are unable to compensate uh, for the devaluation of monetary savings of the people at such a high level of consumer price index growth. As a result, individuals who aim to at least uh, perceive their existing savings are seeking alternatives. One such solution is investing in securities, stocks, ETFs, and uh, other financial instruments. However, if a person lacks experience in the financial sector, there is a high risk of incorrectly composing an investment portfolio, such as failing to adhere to asset uh, diversification rules. As a solution for such problems, uh, some special software tools have been developed, which assist in the composition of the investment portfolio for people without specialized skills and competencies and make that in clear and understandable form. The purpose of this research is to develop an algorithm that allows using trading strategies based on computer analysis for an initial investment portfolio to implement this algorithm in a software tool using Python programming language and to analyze the effectiveness of this approach on real historical datasets. Research objectives include an examination on which indicators-based trading strategies shows better performance versus simple buy and hold strategies. Uh, to propose an algorithm which applies trading strategy based on indicators of technical analysis for investment portfolio that includes more than one financial instrument in contrast of existing researchers and analysis of the obtained results during the experimental part of the research. A research by other authors on this topic shows that the use of automated trading strategies is becoming increasingly popular and has been used more and more frequently in recent years. The studies also determine the uh, appreciance of using financial indicators for asset rebalancing. It is also worth noting the growth of research into the use of machine learning techniques to improve the profitability of investment portfolios. In one of our previous researches, we showed that using a model based on a long short-term memory neural network to predict the prices of financial instruments allows us to build an investment portfolio with better performance. Uh, the algorithm we have proposed, uh, which we will discuss further, can be used in automated trading systems. Algorithmic trading is a computer-based trading method that utilizes algorithms to execute trades in financial markets. Algorithmic trading uses predefined set of instructions to perform a trade. This approach, based on mathematical models and statistical analysis to identify trading opportunities, manage risk, and optimize trading strategies. The input to our algorithm is uh, data on the values of certain financial indicators of technical analysis. Technical analysis is a methodology that identifies certain patterns and trends by analyzing market data such as price, volume, etc., and suggests investment decisions. It is based on the assumption that historical data can be used to predict future price values. And finally, the use of machine learning techniques such as price forecasting using NLST networks can be used to improve an initial promote. Uh, an initial investment portfolio. 
Uh, the main objective of our research is to compare the profitability of investment portfolios that uh, will change the distribution of shares of financial instruments in accordance with buy or sell signals of some technical analysis indicator, comparing to a simple buy and hold strategy. We used three technical analysis indicators, uh, moving average convergence dividends, support and resistance, and uh, relative strength index. The first one, simple moving average, is a set of numeric values calculated by the arithmetic mean of a certain amount of previous price values of periods. We can use different numbers of periods that used to calculate current SMA value, and every period's number will produce different SMA value. When SMA values based on different periods diverge, it is called uh, moving average convergence or divergence. So the periods for calculating SMA are divided into short term and long term. We used two SMA values to calculate moving average buy or sell signal. Uh, the value uh, of five day period, uh, if, um, if uh, the strategy gives a buy signal, if a five day SMA value is greater than 12 day SMA value and a sell signal otherwise. Uh, second indicator is uh, relative strength index. Is, it is another popular technical indicator used for financial analysis to measure the momentum of an asset's price movement. The RSI value is calculated by comparing the magnitude of an asset's recent price gains to its recent price losses, or some previous time steps number, and oscillates between values 0 and 100. You can see the formula on this slide, and when the RSI of some financial instrument reaches the value 70 and above, there are a high probability that the price will come down soon. When the RSI value is uh, 30 or less, it is considered as a buy signal. And uh, the last one technical analysis approach uh, we used is uh, support and resistance strategy. This strategy consists of identifying key price levels where price action is likely to reverse in the opposite direction. These levels are referred as support level when the price doesn't drop below some key level and resistant level when the price doesn't rise above the key level. There are a lot of ways to identify such levels and we used a formula based on comparing the order of magnitude of uh, the price on the logarithmic scale. The initial condition uh, of the developed algorithm, which I will describe next, is a performed investment portfolio. The portfolio for our experiment is built using Markowitz portfolio model for a risk neutral investor. It is a mathematical model for assembling a portfolio of assets such that the ratio of risk to, ex uh, to expected return is minimized. Uh, so, the main part of our research is the algorithm for periodical portfolio rebalancing. The main difficulty is that uh, buy or sell signals are received for each financial instrument separately. Suppose we have an initial portfolio consisting of uh, 10 assets, and the share of each asset is different. For example, 11% of Apple shares, 6% is Microsoft shares, and so on. When we receive, for example, a buy signal for two assets and sell signal for the other three, we need to determine which asset should be sold, how much of it, and which asset should be bought with the proceeds from the sale. We decided to perform portfolio rebalancing on a weekly basis every Friday, and uh, next I'll uh, shortly describe main steps on the, of the algorithm. Uh, step one is uh, check whether there are financial instruments for which a sell signal and a buy signal have been received. Sell signals are taken into account only for those financial instruments that, uh, uh, that do not uh, have a zero share in the current portfolio. If there are no such instruments, no rebalancing is performed. Step two, uh, select one ticker among the financial instruments for which a sell signal has been received. To do this, we should build an investment portfolio based on data for the last five years up to date for each financial instrument 
and compare the share in the current portfolio uh, with the share in this new LA front portfolio. If the share uh, has not changed or has increased, the instrument is removed from the candidates for sale. And otherwise, if the share has decreased, we need to calculate how much of the financial instrument should be sold. To do this, we calculate by how many percent the share in the new portfolio is smaller than the share in the, our current portfolio. Uh, if uh, there are no candidates for sale after the above check left, no rebalancing is performed. Otherwise, if there is at least one candidate for sale, uh, the one with the highest profit from the sale of the relevant share is selected. Step three is selecting uh, one ticker among the financial instruments for which a buy signals have been received. Uh, for each buy candidate, we calculate the percentage change in value over the past five years and choose the financial instrument whose value has increased the most or decreased the least. And finally, step four is uh, if the funds received from the sale of a certain share are sufficient to purchase at least one share of financial instrument we decide to buy, we perform the process of selling and purchasing the relevant financial instruments at current prices. After that, we need to recalculate the distribution of financial instruments in the portfolio. The final step, if it, did, uh, if it is not the last week of the test data set, proceed to step one, otherwise calculate the final value of the portfolio and uh, using the last known prices of the financial instruments in the data set. Uh, so we have uh, conduct, uh, we made some practical experiments. For practical experiments, we choose a set of 12 stocks. They um, uh, identify uh, companies from uh, different uh, sectors of the economy, uh, as it is referred to well-diversified uh, investment portfolio. After completing all portfolio, portfolio rebalancing, the final version of the investment portfolio will be obtained and we will calculate uh, all, uh, all parameters for each portfolio. Uh, this table shows a comparison of the dynamics of changes in the value of the four portfolios for the year 2021. The first portfolio, the shares of financial instruments didn't change through the entire period. The other portfolios used a weekly rebalancing strategy in accordance with the signals of a certain indicator based on moving average, relative strength index, or support and resistance levels. Uh, this table shows the minimum and maximum value of each portfolio and compares the maximum and final difference in the portfolio values uh, relative to uh, buy and hold portfolio without any rebalancing. According to the results, the strategy based on the support and resistance indicator signals showed the best performance. The final value of the portfolio that was rebalanced based on the support and resistance signals was more than $10,000 more than the value of the, um, our buy and hold portfolio. Uh, the final value of the portfolio that used relative strength index signals for a balancing is almost the same as the value of the buy and hold portfolio. The worst result was obtained by the portfolio using, uh, which used uh, moving average index signals for a balancing because its final value is uh, almost $9,000 less than the buy and hold portfolio. Um, uh, the experiment was also conducted using a historical data set for 2022, and you can see a comparison of the dynamics of changes in the value of the four portfolios during 2022. The first portfolio was not rebalanced, the other three used a certain indicator to initiate rebalancing. According to the results uh, of the experiment on the data for 2022, the best result was also shown by the portfolio that used the support and resistance signals for weekly rebalancing. Of course, uh, unforeseen events such as wars or natural disasters have notable impacts on macroeconomics indicators, often resulting in a collapse of prices across various financial instruments. 
However, investments in equities and other securities typically target long-term uh, growth. For instance, the S&P 500 index graph of the past 15 years illustrates a consistent upward trend outpassing the average inflation rate. Even during the challenging times of the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, it took uh, near six months for the index price to recover. Subsequently, the index demonstrated uh, steady growth and reach an all-time high in late 2021. Presently, uh, the current recession, uh, which endured uh, through, uh, which started in 2022, displays signals of concluding and uh, marking the beginning of a new potential period of growth. Uh, thus, our research provides a brief overview of technical analysis tools used by traders to maximize profits from buying and selling financial instruments. The advantage of such approaches lies in their high interpretability and adaptability to different types of financial instruments. We are going to continue research in this area and improve the proposed method of periodical rebalancing of the investment portfolio. <clears throat> and in uh, further research, we are going to consider more technical analysis indicators, such as commodity channel index, with moving average, volume-based indicators, and others. We also plan to investigate the dependence of the effectiveness of using a certain indicator type, depending on the type of financial instruments. Uh, is it a share, uh, precious metals, raw materials, cryptocurrency, etc. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Serhii, for your presentation. Uh, so we have time for answers and questions. Uh, and uh, we have uh, two questions uh, from uh, our previous presenter, uh, Alexandra Novak. And uh, uh, the first question uh, is, uh, was uh, there any purpose in selecting uh, major American tech companies and how? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the, the questions. Uh, uh, I'll show you one slide. Yeah. So uh, I have just chosen uh, biggest uh, companies from their sectors. You can see here uh, the data set includes uh, shares of Apple company, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Tesla, Ford, uh, JP Morgan, my, um, Morgan Stanley, and Vanguard. Uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, yeah. So this uh, they present uh, different uh, different sectors of the economy, and uh, this is just the um, the most uh, valued companies in the sector. Yeah. That's why I choose these ones. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, the second question is, uh, uh, do you plan to select uh, companies for analysis in your uh, future studies? Uh, yeah, the future studies, uh, we hope uh, to analyze, uh, we hope to expand this research and uh, uh, to analyze maybe some uh, types of indicators will uh, give uh, better results for certain types of uh, financial instruments and maybe even for certain uh, categories of uh, companies if we're talking only about shares uh, maybe um, some indicators uh, will be most suitable for for example high technology companies and other can be more suitable for uh, for example uh, companies from financial sector because uh, uh, because um, the price of shares of this company uh, depends on um, different uh, dep depends on different uh, uh, depends on different uh, uh, some actions <laughs> like uh, some news are coming and maybe the other companies like agriculture companies they more depend on the weather and uh, so on. that's why uh, 
different approaches to different uh, types of financial instruments may give some positive results. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, there are no new questions in chat box. Uh, uh, if uh, we have, I, I can ask you. Uh, maybe some uh, would like to ask a question uh, via microphone. You're welcome. If uh, you want, uh, you can raise your hand and ask uh, your question. Um, I uh, didn't see now a new question questions. Uh, so, uh, Siri, I have uh, one question to you. Um, could you please to say, if uh, we change uh, a combination of finance uh, instruments uh, in your portfolio, which you presented here, what do you think uh, the results of effectiveness of choosing algorithm uh, will change or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your question. Uh, I think that the positive result will uh, be all, all will be even with one uh, instrument in the portfolio because uh, basically we receive a bio cell signal uh, for certain uh, for certain share for certain ticker uh, and uh, if it works. Uh, if it works for a portfolio cons consisting from uh, multiple financial instruments, uh, it, uh, it is high, highly probably that uh, it will give uh, the same results for only one uh, financial instrument. Thank you so much. And one connected question. Uh, what do you think will be with uh, results of profitability of your portfolio if you use, for example, unchanged algorithm? If you increase the uh, number of uh, finance uh, instruments, uh, it will decrease, increase, or it will be unpredictable results? Uh, yeah, uh, so we need to, to uh, take into account that uh, increasingly, uh, increasing the number of financial instruments in the portfolio uh, may um, uh, may uh, may result into such case that we receive some sell signals for some uh, financial instruments, but uh, uh, we even can sell them because we uh, have uh, too little amount of these shares. And even if we will sell them, uh, we uh, we won't be able to uh, buy uh, other share for which we uh, received a buy signal. Uh, so uh, it is. It, um, I think the um, uh, the most suitable uh, number of assets in the portfolio also should be. Uh, examined in the experimental uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, I didn't see uh, any uh, raising hand or any new questions. So I, I have uh, one uh, one more question uh, to you. Uh, Sergei, what do you think uh, uh, about your recommendations uh, uh, in, for example, period of recession in economy and uh, during, for example, a period of economic growth, uh, um, do you propose to invest money in different combination of finance instruments, or it depends of on economic development? Um, <clears throat> of course, it depends from the each uh, certain situation. But uh, during the um, recession periods, uh, some investors prefer to. Uh, uh, to increase uh, their investments in, uh, for example, uh, some state uh, bonds. And even if in Ukraine we have, um, uh, we have a possibility to uh, invest in, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know the word, Viskovi uh, Obdihatsi, uh, it's like uh, military bonds. Yes, military bonds. And uh, yeah, it uh, could be a good decision for the in such periods with uh, with uh, 
in for such periods of reflection. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your answers. Uh, thank you for questions of our participants. And uh, if uh, we have new question, then uh, thank you so much. Uh, we will finish your part of uh, um, presentation and uh, we will go to our um, final presenter uh, Bogdan Yakimchuk and Olena Leshenko with uh, research uh, is entitled by modeling uh, the resource planning system for grocery retail uh, using machine learning. Uh, so you're welcome. Uh, uh, could you please to uh, on your uh, sound because now uh, oh, mm -hmm. you change your uh, sound okay now is a good can, can, can you okay thank you um, good afternoon dear audience dear chairs thank you for organizing such conference uh, today I'm going to present Taras Shuchanko National University of Kiev uh, just one second, I will share the screen. Uh, please try again. Uh, I think uh, you can use uh, uh, start demonstration and uh, uh, you can choose uh, full screen uh, of your presentation the, and choose them or you can choose uh, demonstration of your screen and after that uh, uh, to choose your presentation as you prefer. Yeah, sorry, so just uh, one technical problem, just a second. Okay. You tell if you can see. Yes, you see. You're welcome. You can start. Okay. Uh, so today I want to present our research and model in the resource planning system for grocery retail using machine learning. Uh, first of all, I want to start uh, with agenda. Uh, here we have uh, an introduction. Uh, the approach to modeling the resource planning system and implementation outcomes and subsequent phases of the research. Uh, so let me start with the um, introduction. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent um, Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine uh, made a great influence on the market, so the trends have changed. And now uh, each company, especially the grocery retail company, have to be more operationally efficient. So this way, uh, there are some issues regarding um, the problem of forecasting because we have an um, unexpected influence of different exogenous factors such as air sirens or uh, blackouts. And now uh, retailers have to decide how they can transform in uh, this way to be more operationally efficient and one of the uh, main aspects of uh, retail operations are labor scheduling that may lead to significant uh, financial effect and help to remain the model, the business model stable of the grocery retailers. Uh, so um, even if it's a very basic uh, part of the retail company to make a labor schedule, still the company through the lean initiatives uh, can get a uh, good financial result. So due to research of McKinsey, uh, there can be a remarkable 15% reduction in operational cost for retail that use um, modeling in operational efficiency. And um, another way uh, they can um, improve is data-driven labor scheduling based on the data. Uh, which can lead to 4-12% cost savings. And um, this way, it can also give an opportunity to retailer remain with a good uh, customer service and have an opportunity uh, uh, to grow at a higher pace. 
Uh, so uh, we usually don't have uh, one common formula or um, algorithm to make labor scheduling, but here we can see uh, a generalization and mathematical formalization of labor scheduling. So, so the time for any activity in the supermarket uh, can be decomposed to the target and standard time, plus any adjustments for the specific characteristics of the store region or et cetera and multiplied by some activity quantity driver. Uh, so usually target and standard time uh, that um, such measure, measure that uh, have received, uh, which gross retailer can receive uh, through the empirical uh, research or may um, use the industrial benchmarks. Uh, but there are those measure, measures that um, cannot be uh, improved in a very um, high way. So um, usually the retailer can work with the good forecasting of the quantity driver uh, and optimize the time for any activity. So the special effect for the um, good forecast for the activity quantity driver, which usually is revenue or the number of orders in retail, go through uh, machine learning algorithms, especially. And the time for activity uh, can be then optimized using the mathematical optimization algorithms. Uh, when we are expecting to improve the forecast uh, of revenue orders, we can also expect the better um, management of cash flow, for example, optimization of inventory. This way the retailer can better uh, manage the level of stocks uh, and the level of weight, plan promotions, uh, pricing strategy, and of course, uh, gain some more knowledge about new product development and its potential effect on retail operation. Uh, so in our case today, we will um, work through the example of how um, labor scheduling model can be built uh, for the major Ukrainian grocery retailer especially in its uh, service, um, which is delivery. Uh, now, as you know, uh, there are three different ways how delivery is um, constructed in a retailer. Traditionally, it can be self-pickup when uh, the customer can choose um, the product and then um, choose also the time slot and the locations where it can get it uh, on its way. Uh, also, there is... Um, the usage of third party um, delivery providers. For example, in Ukraine, uh, such uh, companies are Globo and um, Bolt Foods, and subsequent time ago, there was uh, Uber Eats. Uh, another way, the third way, uh, we can create uh, our own uh, service and can provide uh, better relations of. Um, customer and the company, better understand the values uh, of each customer and create better service for each customer personally. Uh, so here in our case, we'll work through this third um, way how uh, delivery service can be provided uh, by the grocery retailer. And let me start with the architecture that was uh, designed uh, to show uh, how um, how we can optimize the grocery retail operation, especially the labor scheduling. For the resource planning system, we created uh, the architecture that uh, consists of three layers, the data and business inputs that uh, corresponds to gathering all the data flows, the company and creating uh, one single data warehouse with all the knowledge about the operations and the customer. The second is forecast optimization layer, that is um, the layer of machine learning algorithms that helps um, to give the recommendation of how many orders would be a specific uh, day or even time slot and also optimize um, the operations by creating the effective uh, schedules that may lead uh, to uh, better operational effectiveness of the company. And the third one is business intelligence layer. That is, is the layer that corresponds to dashboards and comfortable visualizations that 
uh, helps the management to make um, uh, fluid decisions and improve uh, the whole system. So first of all, we start with data preparation. So our all the data that we have information about uh, where the address of uh, each operation, the revenue generated through it, and so on. We have to make uh, to take all this data and transform it to the present polygon facilities uh, to correspond to the volatility of uh, such polygon structure uh, for each city. Then we have to incorporate weather. Um, this way we can uh, expect when there would be uh, growth of the orders due to uh, bad weather, the rainfall, snowfall. We also have to integrate the holiday periods where we have um, uh, peak sales. Uh, and sometimes it encompasses a distinct influence on the operations period. And also such uh, information as air series um, and blackout periods. So after that, we can take it as an input to our machine learning model. Uh, but first of all, we have to transform our data and clean it uh, out of the out layers. So uh, in our research, we have used five different uh, algorithms. That is K, K nearest neighbor detector, isolation forest, angle based of layer detection, uh, histogram based of layer detection, and local correlation integral. After taking this course of these five methods, we have weighted them. And then um, this way, we have um, outlined the observation that may be the anomaly for us and we cannot um, describe such um, low high sales with our internal parameters such as holidays uh, air series and so on after doing that we use two different time series uh, models one of them is uh, facebook profit model and the neural profit model uh, so as Retail has some um, seasonal patterns, and sometimes uh, we know them, uh, and we know what is the effect of uh, external regressors, such as holding COVID-19, for example. We can use them as inputs, and um, also uh, at non-periodic trend. This way, we can compose uh, the decomposable time series model and uh, which can be also extended with the neural network architecture uh, that can capture nonlinear patterns through lock and future regressors. Here you have an example uh, how uh, our time series can be transformed with uh, trend rate change, uh, weekly seasonality, uh, our AR weight, and uh, multiplicative uh, uh, regress the weight of the snowfall and rain. As we see for uh, each specific story level, we have different results. For the example that we see on this slide now, uh, we have a high trend uh, change uh, during January of 2023. And for this uh, story, we have uh, higher sales during Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and uh, decrease, uh, significant decrease during Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, also, the previous period, uh, one, two, four uh, days ago, has a high positive effect uh, on our forecast, and six, seven, and ten a day have negative. Uh, we also consider for this store, rain leads to negative influence, and snowfall uh, leads to uh, high sales. So this way, uh, by creating the specific model and training it on the cross-validation um, data set, we can um, get information, what is the best architecture for each store level, and find the best hyperparameters. Uh, after making the forecast, we can split it into the time slots, uh, and then use this information to make the optimization. So we use the order forecasting slot, average delivery time, through our historical data slot widths, order density in routes, and then give our target utilization of resources. Uh, this way we can um, calculate what is the number of um, FTEs should be, um, should, should we, should be used uh, by each transport time. Uh, also, we give here our business rules that we have to 
uh, we have the maximum uh, branch productivity, maximum incremental growth rate, minimum uh, root and shift duration. And uh, using all these parameters, we can create the optimization model, uh, which has uh, such a target function where we have to uh, minimize uh, the, the discrepancy between demand and planning in the context of resource allocation. By uh, making this optimization model, we can now uh, get the final result and give them to the business uh, business algo layer, uh, where the manager can uh, get information about how many schedules uh, and how many resources should be allocated for each of the schedules, what would be the orders forecast by each of the transport type, and what would be the key metrics, uh, such as productivity and order fulfillment. So uh, what were the expected results? The expected results were optimization of work shifts to mitigate uh, morning and evening hours where we have uh, less orders uh, than during the peak hours of the day. We have to identify and allocate uh, shifts to compensate for the shortfalls arising from contractor work operations. And we have to anticipate workforce adjustment during high demand periods, uh, such as holidays and uh, high snowfalls and so on. Uh, what we have received, we have received uh, that 73% of our uh, stores were forecasted by narrow profit and 30% by profit. We have received the total 16.3% MAP, uh, which is a pretty good result corresponding to what uh, the, in such period of fluctuation of sales uh, we can expect. Uh, by using this forecast and um, creating the uh, decision support system. In the short term, there was the, the reduction of 127 hours per day uh, for all the stores. Uh, that is 1.1 hour per day per branch. That increased the productivity by 4.8% and 10.1% in dynamics. That led to the CPO reduction on the level of 8.6%, which is pretty high. Uh, and if the model in the future would be expanded and all the input parameters would be adjusted, there is uh, also uh, the simulation of the expected full potential, which can be even 16% cost per order. So uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention, and I'm ready for the Q&A session. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Uh, you exactly use the uh, uh, first part uh, of your time. And uh, now uh, we have possibility for uh, questions. Uh, um, dear participants, you're welcome. Who will be first? So we have first question uh, from, our, from Sergei Savchenko. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Uh, do you have any plans for practical implementation of your results in cooperation with some businesses? Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, first of all, as I said before, all this data and all this infrastructure is built uh, with the cooperation with uh, one of the nationwide retailer. Uh, gave an opportunity to test uh, such a system. And these results are the real business results that were received uh, during the first pilot phase. Now, uh, as I am presenting the particular results uh, that we have received at the moment that the paper was um, created, at this moment, uh, there's still, uh, the system is developing with uh, another features. Uh, that were included by this period, and of course, with working for better accuracy of demand forecasting. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, the second question uh, from Alexandra Novak. Uh, thanks for presentation. Uh, question to Bogdan. Uh, how the data was collected? Uh, do you think uh, of developing a special application for this research mechanism? Thank you so much for your question. Uh, so first of all, uh, the data uh, was gathered through the data warehouse using Microsoft SQL Server infrastructure. The data was also received from the uh, 
a specific courier data platform, uh, which is on the Amazon Redshift. And I also used uh, Airflow and have uh, to collaborate with the system and gather everything at uh, one unique data warehouse. So here in this data warehouse, we have data on transactions, uh, that is the orders, uh, the weather metadata gathered through open meta, and uh, another master data, which is AI series, uh, and some specific information about the store. Um, so the question, the next part of the question was um, about developing a special app for these research mechanisms. So of course, um, when we are talking about the implementation of this system is to creating a good interface for the courier where he can receive his uh, schedule uh, ad hoc and uh, can collaborate uh, by changing uh, some preferences. For example, if you want to have the weekend or something else. Uh, so there is still working with integration uh, with the already made application for the couriers. Um, but still, uh, we need to make a system that may uh, create a very comfortable schedule on the uh, courier level, which is not uh, an easy task. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you for your uh, answer. Uh, if uh, something from participants uh, uh, prefer to ask a question through the microphone, you are welcome. Uh, so if questions are absent, I uh, also have a couple of questions. Uh, could you please uh, uh, to demonstrate uh, two tools uh, which uh, you propose to process the data, um, uh, neuron uh, uh, or something else, uh, title of this, uh, which you are using and compare it using different metrics such as MSE at, uh, uh, and uh, several one. If it's possible, please, uh, use your presentation to demonstrate the slide with this uh, uh, information. Yes, thank you. Neural uh, profit and profit. Uh, could you please to tell us, is it some auto ML uh, tools uh, or, for example, your own development? Um, it's pretty difficult to compare this method with auto ML because AutoML works uh, with uh, choosing the best hyperparameters automatically. So you just give the data to AutoML and then it turns to you uh, the uh, set of um, methods or algorithms and the scores that, can, the, that they can give. In this case, uh, we've created our own engine to find the best hyperparameters. Uh, that's also one of the main challenges because uh, as we have more than 100 stores uh, or dark stores, uh, and the model is specific for each store level, each, uh, and the model is not global, that means that um, training of such model may take even 10 hours uh, to give the final uh, architecture for each store and the best hyperparameters. So here we used Optuna uh, as an engine for choosing the best hyperparameters. Uh, uh, thank you. So neural uh, profit and profit, uh, it's a uh, uh, external uh, software as, as, as I see or not? That, that are free uh, libraries developed by Facebook and uh, they, are, they can be implemented using uh, Python with uh, any data. In our case, we use Airflow and there we use uh, the already trained uh, models using these two methods. Thank now you. Uh, we are even going further. Uh, we have found some better models for the part of the um, stores. We used LGBM um, and, and HITS model, and they even help us to reuse the time uh, of training. Uh, thank you. And one more question. Uh, did you use uh, your machine learning models only for predicting or also for interpretation and explanation of results? 
Uh, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, uh, here at one of the slides, uh, you may see uh, the plot with uh, the influence of each parameter. That is, is a good advantage of uh, neural profit and Facebook profit. These two methods uh, gives you an opportunity to interpret your results, and you can understand how each factor is weighted in your final observation. And you can even understand how you can uh, embed in your information to get more accurate results. Uh, so, uh, answering your question, yeah, uh, we use both um, machine learning models, both to um, get a better accuracy of prediction and to interpret the final results and the inference. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, at least uh, uh, um, one more uh, um, small question about uh, machine learning models. You demonstrated some set of these models, uh, uh, but uh, you didn't propose some uh, criteria of uh, uh, relevance of criteria of this model. So, uh, as I understand, uh, you use some car nearest neighbors or something else, uh, uh, in your machine learning model. So uh, the question is, uh, uh, how did you choose this machine learning methods? For example, using some criteria or it's, uh, for example, from your point of view is more appropriate models for your data? Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, uh, at the first part uh, of when creating and choosing the algorithms, uh, we have used a range of different uh, algorithms such as uh, ARIMA, uh, exponential smoothing, uh, and so on. So uh, maybe uh, like 10, 15 models. And after training, we received that, first of all, um, not all time series models can include uh, external regressors. Usually they work only on the historical data. Yeah. And neural profit and Facebook profit gives such an opportunity. Also, we used LSTM model. Uh, but uh, neural profit outperformed LSTM, and LSTM didn't have an opportunity to interpret the final result. And for us, at that moment, that was much more important to understand uh, how our time series moves. Uh, the criteria for choosing uh, the model is RMSEM, not uh, mean absolute error or other metrics. That is uh, because RMSEM is pretty good for the retail sales because uh, it gives more influence on deviation. And uh, the sales of uh, a retailer is usually very deviated and influenced by a lot of different factors. Uh, this way, Armesia was choosing as the best metric. But in the future, there is a, an idea uh, to create a um, custom metric uh, where we can value the business effect. So sometimes, um, receiving better forecast uh, with peak, uh, peak sales uh, periods is, would be much better for business than to over forecast uh, the periods where we have the slowdown. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, about what you think, uh, uh, maybe um, you can also to explain some moments uh, when you use some data set, uh, for example, you divide it, for example, your data set as a rule for training data set and testing data set. Uh, uh, maybe you remember difference in MSE, for example, for training, uh, both training and test uh, MSE. For example, what difference and uh, maybe MSE for tests uh, uh, data set something uh, more than for training one? Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting question for the time series, because usually for time series, uh, there is no... Um, unique way how we can split into training and test data set because uh, all the dates should be in the chrono chronological order uh, so here uh, we create as the cross validation where we have um, uh, choosing 14 days and rolling this 14 days uh, from the uh, one year till the higher period uh, and uh, making all our assessment uh, for each of this uh, 
small periods of 18 days based on the historical data and then uh, changing our weight of each of the parameters and the hyperparameters. Um, in this, in our case, um, now 16.3% uh, is not the test metric, but um, the metric in production that we have received during the first months of testing the system. And during on training and um, on, on training period, where we're just uh, choosing the model, um, the result is not much different. So it's pretty close to what we received uh, on the pilot period. That uh, means that we don't have the problem with um, um, overtraining. So I think uh, that that was a good uh, choice to make such an approach to train the model. Thank you so much for your excellent presentation and for your very clear answers on all our questions. Uh, uh, so, uh, time uh, is uh, almost up and I would like uh, to thank uh, all of our participants, uh, all our presenters, uh, and thank you so much for your very interesting research. Uh, 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 I wish you uh, to prepare it in your best uh, uh, results uh, to our PhD defense uh, and uh, I hope uh, this PhD symposium can help you in, in this point. So thank you so much, thank you for your participation, thank you for your presentation. Uh, if you have time, uh, we will have last uh, third section of our PhD symposium uh, 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 at uh, 5 uh, and uh, 30 p.m. So uh, if you have possibility, we will be happy to see you again. Uh, now uh, our section is over. Thank you so much. And uh, that's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.